how to build a Shopify e-commerce website for artists. My name is Emma Pepper. I'm the Program Director of the Camera Foundation for the Arts. I'm joined here on the video by Josh Dodd of Mesh Design and Development. Yes. The Tamarack Foundation works to build the creative economy of West Virginia by helping artist entrepreneurs. Our services are available to all artists across the state, whether or not they are juried into the Tamarack Retail Facility in Beckley. This webinar is part of the Creative Entrepreneur Speaker Series that we're holding. So through the end of 2016, we're hosting nine experts from across the nation. These experts will address topics like building websites, like we're going to do here today with our Shopify e-commerce site, um, talking about social media, pricing your work, preparing for fairs, festivals, and national trade shows. All of these events are available for free because we received a generous grant from the Benedum Foundation. And you can check out the schedule for the full speaker series by visiting our website, www.tamarackfoundation.org and clicking the speaker series link on the home page. If you have questions or comments at any time during the presentation, you can submit them by using the box labeled chat at the bottom of the screen. So type in your question or comment where it says write a message and then click the send button. Then I'll go ahead and type a note now to everyone. So please note that when you make a comment here, it will show up and be visible to everyone who is attending this webinar. And at the end of the presentation, we'll leave time for Q&A, and I'll review all of the questions that are popping up in that chat box and ask them of Josh at that time. Hey to Kim and Lisa, and hey to everyone else who's joining us today. Um, so I encourage you, just like Kim and Lisa, to submit any thoughts or questions that you have um, during the presentation, and we will get to all of those uh, at the end. So if you, get, if you experience any technical issues today, you can refer to that email we sent yesterday uh, talking about some basic troubleshooting tips. And if the presentation window freezes for you at any point, you just close that window and go back to that email that you received and click that Join Now button again, and that will reestablish your connection. Um, also, if you have problems with audio, there's a phone number uh, where you can call in and hear the audio. That phone number is also in the Click Meeting email that you received. So without further ado, let's introduce Josh Dodd. Josh is the co-founder of Design and Development, and he co-founded the company to bring his knowledge of web technologies to the small business and nonprofit world. He's a graduate of WVU with a BS in computer science and an avid WVU fan. His belief both in clean coding and usability enhances every aspect of the user experiences created by Mesh, where he leads all of the UI and UX decisions. He has extensive experience developing websites and carries his knowledge of large-scale, multi-brand web systems when approaching every Mesh project. Josh also manages all internal arteries of Mesh and leads the team in constantly increasing usability and maximizing efficiency in every project. When not on the computer, Josh is building something hands-on, whether it's brewing beer, utilizing his carpentry skills, or rehabbing old structures. In 2011, he was recognized by the Preservation Alliance for his historical restoration work on the original Mesh Studio. Welcome to Josh, and many thanks to you for leading this webinar for us today. All right. Emma, that was the longest intro I've ever had. I think all you had to say was, here's Josh. He makes websites. He's here to help you. So. No, you deserve the lengthy <laughs> intro, Josh. Well, thank you. So are we ready to get started? Yeah, let's do it. Um, all right. So hi, everyone. Um, as Emma mentioned throughout the um, presentation here, 
feel free to send me a chat um, down at the bottom there. <coughs> um, if I see a question pop up, I'll, I'll try to answer it as we go. Um, we have quite a bit to, to get through. So um, I'll try to answer it, but if I don't, then we definitely have time at the end for Q&A. Um, so let's get rolling. So today what I would like to show you guys is how to set up your own e-commerce store. So e-commerce is a fancy word for a website where you can sell stuff online. So I'm sure everyone here has some sort of product or some sort of artwork they would, they would love to sell online. Um, so let's jump right in it. So I want to start out by talking about what e-commerce is and what Shopify is. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. And this is just um, the Shopify website. So Shopify is an online platform that allows you know, anybody to log in and create a website where they can sell things online. Um, generally, uh, if you're talking about e-commerce websites or building a website, um, you would normally have to go find a web developer or company like Nash or and millions of other companies out there that um, will build a custom website for you. Um, especially with e-commerce websites, you need to have a, some sort of software platform to manage all of your products. You have to be able to have software to allow users to um, create a shopping cart, add products to a shopping cart, go through a whole checkout process, and then you have to worry about taking credit cards online, um, which is a huge security issue, and then you need to find some sort of hosting company um, to host everything. So that can be a lot, and it can cost a lot of money. Um, and Shopify basically takes everything that I just mentioned there and puts it all into one online platform um, that makes it super easy for people that know nothing about the Internet or know nothing about web development um, so that they can hop right on and start selling literally within minutes. Um, what I want to show you today is how to actually log in, create an account, and create a store and get up and running. Um, so without further ado, I just want to start off and let's I'm on the Shopify site right now. It's at Shopify.com. Um, and you can simply just enter your email address to get started. So I'm going to do that. Once you do that, you're prompted to enter a password for your store. And today I'm going to create just a, a sample store, um, and we're going to base it around selling sneakers. So I'm going to call my store name like Cool Shoes but it looks like that already exists. So you can't use that name, Cool Shoes, Charleston, because I'm in Charleston, West Virginia. So let's create our store. I'm going to take a second to get started, but once you get through this, we're going to be ready to start selling online. Um, we're just going to put in some simple information here. And one thing to note as I'm doing this, um, Shopify does not cost anything to get started. So you'll notice here that I don't have to put any payment information in. But Shopify is a paid service. Um, and we'll get into the different levels um, later on. But big picture, if you were to build a website, I mentioned earlier, it's thousands of dollars and plus you have to pay monthly hosting fees. Um, with Shopify you pay uh, one monthly fee, and it's low cost, and that's it. So you don't have to worry about any other fees. It's just one bill, and that's it. So again, these are just um, intro questions that Shopify wants to, to ask. I'm just going to fill out whatever. All right, so there's just two screens. I clicked Enter my store there. And now this is Shopify. So with just filling out this, those two little forms, I'm ready to start selling online. Um, to start out here, you'll notice this is what's called the dashboard. Um, this is where you will log into and edit all of your um, products, control all of your content, and customize the look of your website. Now you'll notice here at the top at the URL. So the URL is what people type in to go to your store. So right now you can see it's coolshoes.charleston.myshopify.com. So if we were to go to that right now, 
you'll see a very blank site. So this is just a vanilla blank template that Shopify creates for you. Um, but you also see there's still cool shoes that trails on my Shopify.com. You usually don't want to do that. You want to have um, Cool shoes, Charleston.com, or, or awesome shoes.com, whatever you want it, your domain name is. So Shopify does allow you to do that. Um, and you'll see here if I, I flip back over to the, um, the dashboard here. And on this main section, Shopify has a section called advice. So it kind of gives you a step by step of what you need to do. So you need to add products, customize the look of your site, and then set up a domain. So we're going to kind of follow through what their advice is. And throughout, um, throughout the lifetime of your store, store, Shopify will always kind of give you these little hints. And I'll, I'll hit on them as we go. Um, but to start out, uh, let's just take a look at what else the interface has here. So in the left navigation bar, you have the main sections of your store. You have orders. So this obviously is where all of your orders will come in too. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. We'll go into each section in detail. The products is where you manage all of your products. Customers is just a, a listing of every customer that's ever bought something from you. And in that section, you can run custom reports. You can export um, your customer information if you have like a, an email system or something like that. Um, the reports section gives you reports of your sales or your website traffic for the month. Um, the discounts. The discount is where you can create discount codes. So if you want to have like a buy one, get one off promotion, you can go into that section and create a discount and allow people to do that. Now, there's no, so that's the, the bulk of, that's where all of your content and your sales happen. Now, here are their sales channels. You see it says online store. Um, the reason it says sales channels plural is because Shopify does have a few extra features um, that allows you to sell in person. So let's say that you have a brick and mortar. Um, you obviously need to you know, make sales, pay credit card payments, cash, whatnot. Um, Shopify does have an in-person POS system that integrates with the online system. So that is super nice, especially if you're tracking inventory, so you'll have two separate systems. So it is a, an additional fee per month, but um, it is extremely convenient, we found, for our clients that, that use both. Um, you can also, if you can see over here on the right here, um, you can also sell on Facebook, and then you can add products to existing sites. We're not going to get into that, but those are just extra features that Shopify um, offers, offers you to maximize your sales. So if we were to click into this online store section, this is everything that has to do with your online store. So not only does your store have sections to sell your products, but you can also create a blog through Shopify that so you would go into the section to manage the blog. Um, you can have just regular content pages. So let's say you wanted to have a page for About Us. Um, you could have that there. And then the next three are just other settings for your store. So um, the navigation on your store, so that would be this top navigation. So what are, the, what are the main links that you want people to see? Um, and then also domains and preferences. Domains I hit on earlier of what, what the user actually types in to go to your store. And then preferences are just for their store settings that we'll get into. Um, down here at the bottom are two extra things. So apps, I'm not going to get into apps today, but with Shopify they offer all kinds of extensions. So if you were to click on this app, uh, section. They recommend all kinds of different things that you can add on to your store. So I'm sure many of you use QuickBooks. So there's a QuickBooks app that can, that can allow you to automatically sync your store sales data to your Quick, QuickBooks online account. So there's many things like that. And I'm sure once you guys get in here and click around, you'll find some very cool things that you can add to your store. And then the last thing is just your general settings. And we'll hop into a little bit of that later on. So the first thing that um, first thing I want to talk about real quick before we get into adding products is any time that you are dealing with any type of website, especially an e-commerce website, um, you want to come in prepared. You don't want to just hop in and start clicking around. 
Um, you want to make sure you have a really good idea of what the content is on your site, uh, what your products are. You should have um, descriptions and content for your products um, ready to go. Uh, you want to have product photography if you have it ready to go. And have a good idea how you want those products organized. So um, for shoes, we might want to have them organized into sections by type of shoes. I want to have them organized in sections by colors, by price. So have a good idea of what you want before you even get started. So that's kind of tip number one right off the bat. Um, and it's, it's general, not even with Shopify, but just on any website in general. All right, so let's hop in here and start creating our site. So I'm going to hop back over to the live site here. Um, as you can see, there's just a bunch of example data in here. And what Shopify does is kind of nice is if you don't have anything in there, they'll give you little, little hints. So the pay your list there, you want to add a product. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go over here to product section. Under product, let's do add product. All right. So this screen is, I'm sure this will be the most common screen that you see when you're managing a store because this is where you actually manage products. And there's a lot going on here. So I want to walk you through each section and describe what it is and, and why it's important. So the first thing here is the title of the product. So again, I'm selling shoes, so let's call this one like um, red running shoe. Now the description here, so this is just a text editor. Um, it works just like a Word document. Um, you can see here you've got bold, italic, bulleted list. Um, what I'm going to do is just paste in some dummy content here. And you can see it does have a built-in little spell checker. So for those of you that are terrible spellers like myself, um, that will help. But again, you can see this is just some um, filler content. You can change the alignment. Um, you can add bulleted lists. You can insert links. I'm not going to get into too much of this formatting here um, because I think you could, the way that Shopify does it, if you just hover, you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, and Shopify also has great documentation that um, I'll, send, I'll add a couple of links at the end of this um, presentation for you. So the description, obviously, is the description of the product. The next thing scrolling down here is adding images. So I have a couple images that I want to add. So you can just click and drag from the desktop. You can see here, let me make my window a little bit smaller. All right. And here is the picture of my red running shoe. Now let's actually add two of them. So you can see I just clicked and drag. And now I have two images. The first one that you upload is going to be the main image, and then you have a, a secondary image. Now as you scroll down, um, pricing. So how much do we want to charge for the shoe, say $50? Um, if this is something that is on sale, then you can add a compare at price. So let's say that this was initially $60. You add the compare at price, and what that will do is um, on the front end, it will show that it's on sale, um, and it will have the old price marked out. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, the next checkbox here is for charging taxes. So taxes and shipping, um, those are all things within the settings section that we went, went through quickly earlier. Um, so if you are charging taxes on products, you would want to have that checked. So since it's a shoe, I think we do want to charge taxes. All right, so the next thing is inventory. So Shopify does track inventory. So um, what you can do here is enter the SKU or barcode. You don't have to do this, but if you have a lot of products and a lot of inventory, I'm sure that this would be a, a helpful item. We'll just enter a number in the, in the SKU. And then let's say that Shopify does, does track the inventory. So if you do that, then you can see there's a couple more options. So you can tell it how many you have in stock. Let's say we have seven of these in stock. Um, and the next checkbox it says, allow customers to purchase this product when it's out of stock. So this is up to you. If you constantly are getting in new products and you want people to go ahead and 
and purchase this, then it will be available. If not, then leave it unchecked. Um, a couple more things here. We've got shipping. So for your shipping, again, I mentioned taxes and shipping earlier. Um, this is something in settings that you will set up. Um, in shipping, you can set up to do it by weight, or you can do it by price, or you can just have one flat shipping fee. Um, so assuming that we were shipping this by weight, we could put in the weight of the product, and you can see it's in pounds there. Um, and then fulfillment service, uh, this is manual by default. There are ways that you can automate fulfilling, uh, fulfilling orders, but just keep this manual to, be, to begin with. Now the next thing here is called variants. So does this product come in multiple sizes or colors? So for my shoe here, um, right now we know that it's red, um, but we might have it in different sizes. So a size would be considered a variant. So right now if you click on um, Add Variant, you can put in whatever the variant name is, so this is size, and then it says option value. So what size does this come in? So you just start typing in, and if you hit enter, it will add a variant for you. So let's say we have this in size 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you can see as I added each of the variants that I had a, a listing of each um, product size down here. So let's say that you had, um, say you were selling baskets, and it was one style of basket. Um, and it came in three different sizes, but they were all three different uh, prices. So you could actually change the price here. So if a user were to select, hey, my shoe size is five, then maybe it's only $45. Um, and maybe you have different stock keeping unit numbers for each size. So this is where you could modify each of those. And again, you could also have different numbers of inventory for each one. So you could update that here. So it kind of creates, it's one product, but it's almost treated like, you know, four or five different products since you have different sizes. Um, you can add other options. So let's assume that there was a different color. Um, you could add that in. And what that does is it just multiplies um, your sizes and color variants. So you can see if you have size 5 in red, then here's the, the option. If it's 5 in green, here's the option. So you can see how variants, um, you can get to a lot of products quickly if you have a product that's in multiple sizes, colors, um, style, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go back and just say that this is, we only have sizes, not different colors. All right, so once you complete that, that's the bulk of the, um, of the information you need to add. Um, down here at the bottom, it gives you a search engine Search engine listing preview. So this is what, if someone were to Google a red running shoe um, and you were to come up as one of the listings, this would be what it looks like. Now Shopify allows you to edit what that looks like. So if you click on edit, um, you could give it a, a custom title here. You could type in something specific for the description. Um, and you can also change the actual URL. Most of the time, um, you should leave this blank, but if you want to add in you know, custom words or custom language for users to see on Google, you can feel free to do that. All right, so let's scroll all the way back up to the top. Now that this main left column is filled in with content, and let's look at the right side. So this, this right side is really how you organize your products on the store and how people see them. So the first thing is visibility. So there's a checkbox beside online store. That means that once you save this product, it's going to be visible on the store. If you were to have that unchecked, then this product would be saved <clears throat> in the backend admin area here, but users would not be able to see that. So uh, if you want to bulk add a bunch of, uh, bunch of shoes in here, a bunch of products that you don't want other people to see yet, then you could keep that unchecked. So let's go ahead and check that. Now, the organization. So the product type and vendor, these are, these are kind of more for internal purposes. So I'm going to add shoes as the product type. And since I'm just making this hypothetical shoe store, all my products are going to be shoes. That's all I'm selling. If I were to have like 
shoestrings and like cleaning products, I could add new product types. But for this uh, this presentation, we'll just do shoes. And then then there. So this is um, whoever made this. Um, and again, the vendor could could always be the same. If it's all of your products, then you wouldn't need to add a vendor. But if you're selling a lot of different brands and different types of products, um, you could add the vendor here so that you know what you have in stock. So this is some brand issue, I think. So all right. So the next two things are important. So collections and tags. So the way that Shopify organizes your products are in different collections. So you can think of collections as any time that you enter a an e-commerce store. So let me just go to one real quick. So it's going to, to gap.com because they sell a lot of different types of things. So if this were a, a Shopify store, um, the collections on this would be the top level menu items. So they have a collection for women, a collection for Gap Body, whatever that is, Gap Fit, uh, maternity, men, etc. So for shoes, um, we can organize this in many different ways. We could do it by brand, we could do it by color, um, we could do it by style. So this is where you really want to come prepared with how you want to organize your your products. So one uh, tip here is when you're thinking of how you're organizing the product, think of how the customers will will think about it. So it doesn't really matter how you think of it internally or how you organize your products within your own business, but think about it how people are going to be shopping for this. So if I'm looking for shoes, um, what am I looking for? I would say I'm usually looking for a style of shoes. So if I know that I want casual shoes, then I'm going to go to the casual shoe section. If I want hiking shoes, I'm going to go to that section. So I'm going to assume that um, we're going to do it by style. So what you need to do is create collections. Um, so I'm going to save this product for now and come back to it. Let's save this product. Let's go to our collection section. And let's start creating collections that we can add products to. Um, I'm just going to do one real quick and then switch over to a store that we've done. So um, collections. So collections have a title, so let's say casual shoes. Let's call this running shoes because I think that red thing was a running shoe. Running shoes. Now, for collections, um, depending on how you set up your um, theme and how your site looks in Shopify, you can have a description and an image. Um, I'm going to leave that blank for now just to show you real quickly how to set these up. Um, and then you have conditions. So there's two ways you can create collections. So Right now, let's just do manually select products. Um, and that means that we can manually select what products are in that collection. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to save this collection for now. I'm going to go back to my products section. You can see here's my red running shoe. And now I want to add this to a collection. And you can see here that running shoes comes up. So I'm going to select running shoes. And now the last thing here are the tags. So tags are kind of your second level of organization. So think of your collections as that top level, like, like the Gap website was men, women, clothing, shoes, whatever. Here it's going to be running shoes, casual shoes, basketball shoes. And then once you get into each of those sections, how, how do you want to sort within there? So, if I know that I want running shoes, what else do people want to sort by? So this is where you could put in by color. So you could put in red as a tag. Um, you could put in by style. So you could, if these were basketball shoes, you got like high tops, low tops. So this is where you would add those type of things. Um, also, you can, the nice thing about uh, Shopify is they give you little clues here. So cotton and summer. So these are also types of things that you could use by tag. So what is the material? So are they leather shoes? Are they canvas? So th those are the types of things that you want to use for, for tag. So for this one, we'll just call it low top and red. 
and save this. Now, once you have um, the site up and running, or once you have, I'm sorry, once you have a product published, then you can go to the site. And if you refresh it, and we click on catalog here, which is all of your shoes, um, you can see under products, I have a new shoe here. I mentioned that we put it on sale, so it popped up that sale thing. And I said from $45, once you click on it, you can see the multiple images. Here is all of the content that we did. And two images that can click back and forth. Now obviously this shop looks very boring. Um, so I want to take you into the next section, which is um, which is customizing your, your store. So if you go into online store, then click on themes, this is where you can customize the look and feel of your store. So if you scroll down here and click visit theme store, this is a listing of hundreds and hundreds of Shopify themes. So you can browse through here find the theme that makes sense for your, for your content and your product. Um, you'll notice a lot of these have um, test content in there. Like this one has black leather watches and they're selling very hip clothing and stuff. Um, that doesn't mean that you can only use this theme if you have very cool hip clothes. You, what you want to look for is, is the layout, how the products are, are displayed. Um, and make sure that that layout and display works good for your product. Um, so what we've done is actually taken a theme and installed it. So let me show you real quickly what we did. Um, we found the theme that we wanted. So this is one called Brooklyn. So when you click on it, you can view a demo of it and see what it looks like. So here's this Brooklyn theme. You can scroll down. You can see how it's nicely laid out with products and collections. So we took this theme and applied it to our test store. Um, if you just go back and click this install theme button, and you can publish it to your store. So it takes a second here. All right, so once it's installed, it says go to your theme manager. And now, refresh that. And now it did not upload. But assuming that worked, let me just pop you over to um, a site that we have built here. So this site, um, I went through the same process that I just showed you guys. Um, but I went ahead and added a lot of products so you can understand how things work. So I have a bunch of sneakers in here. If I go to the collections, you can see I've got a couple different collections. So let's take a look at the site. So at any time, if you click this little arrow thing here, you can open up the store. So you can see here how this looks a lot more fun than that plain Jane site that we, we looked at. So I put it, added a custom logo here. I added a little tagline, a little button to shop now. As you scroll down, I added a couple collections. So I added basketball shoes and casual. And then we have featured products. So if I were to click into casual shoes, I can see all my casual shoes. Um, so let me give you a quick rundown of how I did that. So I installed the theme um, like I just showed you how. And then I click this Customize Theme button. And what this does is it shows you a screenshot of your, of your theme. And on the right side, it gives you options on how to customize it. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here because every theme that you choose has its own little quirks and own little ways to customize it. Um, but here you can see you can click on Colors, and you can customize all the colors on your site. So the, the background color, the text color, um, basically any, any color that's used on the site you can customize. Um, you can change the fonts under the typography section. You can change the way the header looks. So you can see that I added a logo image here. 
just by simply uploading it from my desktop. Um, on the home page, the home page has specific sections that you can customize. Um, the home page slideshow. So here is a, a a large background image. I'm going to show you real quick how I changed that. So I'm going to hit replace here. Um, and let's find a a new image to use. You can see it uploads it right there. And now I have a new image on the background. So if I were to save this and then go back to the home page of my store, you can see I have this cool new rainbow funky shoe image there. So you can really have fun with it, especially with these themes. Um, one thing that I do want to strongly suggest is every theme, um, if we go back to the theme store, Every theme will come with some sort of instruction guide or documentation. So if I click on this Brooklyn theme, you can see that there's a documentation link here. And this is a step-by-step -step of how to customize um, this theme. So it's pretty long and lengthy, but if you ever want to figure out how to change something, you can look at this, and it takes you step-by-step. -step. So here on the home page, if you wanted to change how the featured collections work, you could just go through that step by step. Um, and again, you can see there's a lot to do with this theme. And most themes are pretty robust like this. So you can change a lot of different things here. All right. So that was just a quick run through of how you customize your theme. So I'm sure most of you guys want to know how do I actually take orders. So let's go through. And let's buy some shoes real quick. So let's do good old shoes. I'm going to add it to cart. And you can see this cart, this theme has a nice little slide out cart on the right. Go to checkout. All right. So here you can see that it says it's unavailable. And that is because we don't have our payment set up. So let's hop over into our setting on onto our settings. And if you go to Payments, um, this is where you can configure how you want to accept payments. So at the very beginning here, I talked about how Shopify was um, kind of makes that whole online store building of a website uh, process very simple, and they take care of everything for you. Well, one thing they do is take care of payments. So what you need to do is set up. It's called a payment gateway, and all you need to do here is click. Um, is to change how you want to uh, set up your payment. So this, this store already has a payment system set up. I'm going to deactivate it so that we can create a new one. So here it says select the credit card gateway. Now, I highly recommend doing Shopify payments because out of the box, that's, um, that's the easiest to set up. All you need to do is click on Shopify Payments, and then uh, click Activate. And what that will do is take you through a process where it links you right up to your bank account. Um, and any time a credit card gets processed, you can transfer it directly to your bank account. Um, usually this, this process of accepting payments is kind of a headache, um, but Shopify makes it super easy. So once you have that payment set up, then you can start taking uh, orders. And you remember earlier we have this order section. And if you click in orders, it gives you a listing of all the orders. So hopefully when you guys create a store, you'll have pages and pages of orders here. I just have one. Um, and what you can do is you can click on the order here. So you can see here where it says payment status authorized. That means that the payment has been Submitted, it went through your payment gateway, the credit card processor. It was approved and authorized. And then fulfillment status. It says unfulfilled. That means we haven't shifted yet. So when you get in an order, you will get an email notification. Um, and then you can go to this page where it tells you exactly what the 
the customer ordered, what their shipping address is. Um, you can capture their payment here. Um, what that will do is it will actually send it over to your bank account. Um, and then once you're ready to go, you can um, actually fulfill the order by, by either creating your own shipping label with the shipping address here, or um, Shopify has ways that you can buy postage online and create a shipping label. And you can see here, this right here gives you, um, this test store was integrated with the USPS, and it will tell you based on the weight here that we put in, um, the average amount. So you can actually buy a label here and print it out and be ready to go. Or you can do all the shipping on your own and just mark it as fulfilled. Um, a couple other things here. One other feature of Shopify is this thing called a banded checkout. Um, and what this does is there will be a lot of users that add products to their shopping cart, but then never check out. So this feature here, um, which you can see there's none here, but this will have a listing of all the people that have added content or added products to their cart. Um, and it will also send automated emails. So I'm sure that you've gotten an email from some large shopping site that says, hey, we noticed that you have X, Y, and Z in your cart and you didn't buy anything. Do you want to come back and buy it? Shopify does that for you. So there are ways that you can set that up. Um, one of the last things I want to show you here. Um, real quickly, a couple things. I'm just going to go through this um, fast, but the reports. So I just want to show you how robust and how um, useful this re these reporting methods can be. Um, if you click on reports, you can have generate reports for sales or for payments or for traffic by many types of things. So for your users, you can visitors by referrer. That, that will tell you what site they came from to get to your site. You can see where the people are. Um, you can see what the people are searching for. Um, you can generate sales by month. You can split it up into any type of category that you have. Um, and when you click on them, obviously we don't have any data here, but it will give you a visual graph here of your sales and then give you a listing of everything in that report. So um, once you get into it, this could be a huge marketing tool for you. Um, Discounts, I'm not going to get into that, but um, Shopify, again, like I mentioned, offers a lot of discounts. And here's a great example of um, what Shopify does well at the bottom here. Throughout the site, you'll see these little question marks. Um, and even though I didn't go through discounts, now that you know that Shopify does offer discounts, you can click on this discount um, link here, and it will take you to a, a help section that tells you step-by-step you know, -step how to um, how to create discount codes for your products. The last thing are shipping. So again, there are a lot of other settings here that we didn't get to, um, but it, most of them are pretty straightforward. But I do want to show you how to set up your shipping. So. The main thing you want to look at here are the zones and rates. So what zones mean are just, you can set up different sections or, or different sections of the United States or different sections of the world that um, require different shipping prices. Um, you can also do it by state. So here, Shopify automatically has a domestic shipping zone. Um, and by default, it has two rates. So you've got standard shipping, and you can see this one's done by, by weight, zero to five pounds, it has a flat fee of 10 bucks, and then heavy goods of five to 20 pounds, that's 20 bucks. If you don't like how that's set up, you can click edit here. And you can set up um, different rates. So let's say that you didn't want to do it by weight. You can just click these two weight items here. And then let's say we want to do it by price. You click add rate. And you get this pop up. And let's say that anything under fifty dollars was free, so we could call that free shipping. Minimum order price zero, 
maximum order of price to say 50, and then the rate is free. So hit done. So then let's add another rate. So anything from 50 to 100 is five dollar shipping. So this is let's call this standard and done. Now what this will do when you save it, if the user's you know total on their shopping cart is seventy five dollars, then you'll charge them five dollar shipping. If it's under fifty, it'll be free shipping. Um, so you can get you know you can set up whatever um, whatever metrics you want there. Um, and it's usually you can kind of figure out what your shipping is. So a lot of, I'm sure a lot of you are selling a lot of the same product. So you know that if someone's spending 50 bucks, then it's probably going to weigh a couple pounds, and it's usually about two dollars shipping. So we'll just call that free. But if they're spending 100 bucks, then you might be a little bit heavier, and I normally spend about five, 10 bucks for that shipping. So let's charge for that. That's usually the best way to do it. Um, but again, you can decide on your own how you want to set up your shipping rate. Um, all right. So I just went through a lot of stuff for you guys. Um, and I'm sure it's very difficult to pick in everything that I said. Um, however, a nice thing about Shopify is they have wonderful documentation online. Um, so at any time, if you go to help.shopify.com, this has a huge, huge list of resources for you. Um, another great thing is if you sign up for an account, Shopify has 24-7 uh, support. So let's say you, you're really stuck on something, you can't figure out something with shipping, you've read through all this, you can just click this contact and they have live online chat, they also have phone support. Um, one other nice site to check out is support.shopify.com. And this is their little knowledge base and um, online forum. So it has a bunch of popular questions that people ask all the time. Like here's a great example of one that I said, how do I set up shipping rates? And this will tell you Shopify's documentation. And if it's something that Shopify hasn't mentioned here, then there's an online forum that people just chat around and figure out solutions on their own. Um, so other than that, the last thing I want to leave you with before we get into Q, uh, Q and A, let me pop off my screen here, is um, once you get a site up and running, that's kind of just the first step. I know it seems like a big first, first step, but once you launch your site, the products aren't going to sell themselves. So you're going to have to do some sort of marketing. So there's all kinds of ways to get the word out there. Um, I'm sure that you guys as business owners are savvy with your marketing, but um, you want to make sure that you understand that you need to promote your site on, on Facebook, on social media. There's email marketing, um, possibly Google ads. There's all kinds of ways to do that. Um, and again, Shopify has a lot of online resources um, at that help.shopify.com um, that will give you little hints or tidbits of information of how to get um, your content out there. So with that said, um, we'll pop into some questions. I see that you guys have a couple up there. Um, hey, Josh. I'm going to hop back on to – this is Emma talking. Sure. How are you? Um, yeah, so thank you so much for this presentation. Um, that was a lot of helpful information, definitely. Um, and yeah, we have a couple of people, uh, Lisa and Jenny, I'm seeing questions from you already. Um, everyone else, please feel free to jump in and start uh, asking your questions, and we'll kick this off with Lisa and Jenny. They are all, the first two questions are, um, referring to monthly fees and transaction fees. So um, yep. can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So I'm pulling up my desktop again. So if you just go to Shopify.com slash pricing, um, this will tell you the basic fees. Um, you can see them here, $29 a month, 
$2.99. I would suggest for almost everybody to start with this basic $29 a month fee. Um, they do have a order processing fee. So you can see here every order, they, it's 2.9% plus $0.30. Cents, and that fee is pretty standard. So um, even if you were to use a, th this fee here, that is using the Shopify payments that I mentioned before. Um, but even if you were to use any other credit card processing fee, it's usually similar to where it's 2 to 3% plus you know, a few pennies per, per transaction. Um, with these different levels of pricing, like I mentioned, um, $29 a month should be good for most people. Um, as you go up, the fees do get smaller for your transaction. Um, but it's with all the, every option here, it's all unlimited storage, unlimited number of products. There are a few extra features here at the bottom that are included in the higher priced monthly fees. But if those, if those things aren't something that are absolutely um, required for your business, I would say stick with this 29 a month and, and go with it. Okay, great. And Lisa says, I'm selling one of a kind item. If an item sells out, does the image remain on the site or does sold pop up in its place? Yeah, so if you remember back in the product section, there is that little checkbox that said um, allow users to purchase this item if there is zero left in stock. So the answer is you can, you can have it either way. So if you were to check that box, it would allow you to still purchase that item. But if you didn't check that box, then it would say it could say sold out, um, you know, more stock coming in two weeks. Okay, great. And a question from Brenda. Um, if you have a site already, like a WordPress site or a Wix site, is this the best way to add an e-commerce or shopping component to an existing site? Yeah, so there's multiple ways to do it. Um, as I mentioned before, if you don't go through Shopify or some other, it's called a, a hosted e-commerce platform, which we just means they take care of all that stuff for you, all the payment processing, all the hosting, all the security, then you, you'll have to deal with that if you were to try to add on e-commerce to a WordPress site. Um, there are add-ons to WordPress and plugins that you can attach to your WordPress um, install. Um, but again, you will, if you're taking credit cards online, you will be concerned with that security. With Wix, I'm not sure they might have some sort of internal add-on for shopping. Um, but really, if you want a, an e-commerce store that is um, going to be robust, meaning that it can grow and scale up with many products, I would say go with Shopify and not even mess with trying to just retrofit a, a shopping site into an existing site. And also, just one thing to add to that, um, a lot of sites have a separate Shopify site in addition to the main site. So if you have one main site or main blog that has a lot of your content and you're really content heavy on that site, then it's totally fine to have a Shopify site. Um, let's say your URL is like tamarackfoundation.com. So a lot of people have tamarackfoundation.com slash shop, and that's actually a Shopify site. So um, there's ways with the, the domain name that you can still keep it feel like it's one main site. It's, it's still technically two separate. Mark is asking about the Shopify.com part of the URL. Can you talk more to about how to keep that or how to get rid of that? Yep. So the simple answer is it will go away if you set it up right. Um, let me pull up. So this is our original store when we got started. Um, what you would do is you want to set up a custom domain. So if you click into this Add Domain section, um, let's say that mine is coolshoescharleston.com. You add that domain. And here, this is a little bit more technical, um, but wherever you have your domain registered, you would want to go in and basically do what they say here. And if you click on this link, it gives you step-by-step -step for a lot of different providers. So if you, let's say you had your domain with GoDaddy, you could click there, um, and it would tell you exactly how to uh, 
how to do that. So once you have that set up, um, whatever, if I went to coolshoescharleston.com, it would look exactly like this, but without the My Shopify at the top. So Brenda has a follow-up question. She says, maybe redundant, you can just link to the Shopify site from your shopping pull-down on a Wix or WordPress site? Uh, yes. So as I mentioned, you could have like a shop.mywixsite.com, and then just when you click on this link here, it would take you directly to the Shopify site. Um, that's as simple as just creating a link on your current site and then link to the new site. Okay, great. And then I have um, I had a question. I noticed on uh, one of the the sample sites that you were working on that it had a password protected function, and I yeah. had thought. Um, you know, when you're working on the site and adding all of your products, then you may not want it to be public yet. Is there a way to switch back and forth between public and not public? Yeah, so right now you can see at the top right, your online store is protected with this password. So the reason I'm able to see this is because I'm actually logged in. Um, if I were to just either log out or open this into a new browser, which I'm not logged into, You'll, everybody would see this. So unless you put the password in here, then you're not going to be able to see this. Now once you have um, your store ready and you're ready to release it to the public, there's just a, um, there's a setting under – let's see. I just went to online store preferences. And here you can take off the password and just save it. And that will take off the, the password on the front of the store. Does that answer it's your great. question, Emma? Yes, it's thank you. Um, oh, so Brenda has another follow-up question, which is really good. So Brenda wants to know if you could have um, both functions, can you have a password protected section of your site? Yeah, so that is a little bit more advanced. Um, there are ways around it with Shopify. Um, one quick solution is to have two separate stores. Um, so if your wholesale inventory is completely different than your retail, then it would make sense to have two separate stores where you could password protect one and then have your normal public on the other. Um, if you were to, if you wanted to add anything beyond that, that would be something more advanced that you would want to have a Shopify developer get into and help you out. So um, everything that I've shown you here is you can get up and running pretty quickly on your own. But if you want to have a custom theme, so I showed you a lot of themes that were already built. Um, what we at Mesh do and what a lot of other companies do is they'll create custom themes about actually get into the code and develop custom websites with a little bit of more custom functionality. Um, that is probably something that um, if you want to do a, a more advanced wholesale, that's probably something that you'd want to check into. Okay, great. And then I have one final question and then let's wrap it up. Um, yep. So when we heard from Sean who uh, taught us about building a WordPress website, he emphasized to us that it was really important to select your theme for what you want your website to look like before you start adding content like products and um, information about those products, et cetera. Do you think that that's also true for Shopify? Yeah, totally. So I'm going to hop back over to, well, I think I stopped my screen sharing. But in the theme store, as I mentioned earlier, um, you want to obviously understand what your content is and have a good idea of how you're going to organize it. And the theme that you choose needs to support that. So they kind of go hand in hand. So um, if themes are built with some custom functionality, so you want to make sure that that works very well with the content that you have. Okay, great. Well, I want to say thank you 
so much um, to Josh for joining us today, and thank you to everyone uh, for participating, and your questions were great. Um, we'll be sending you a follow-up email, and we'll include um, a survey in that email to ask for your feedback on this presentation. Um, so once again, thank you to everyone, and thank you to the the nice comments that you've been uh, posting about Josh's presentation here. We really appreciate your support. All okay, right. everyone. Thanks, everyone. All right, awesome. We're going to sign off here. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. See you, everyone.